So Newcastle United have just signed Alexander Izak for a fee of around 60 million pounds plus potential add-ons. That makes him the most expensive player in their history. He's gonna play as a, a number nine, but 60 million pounds is obviously a lot of money, but Izak is a player who's been mentioned in the same breath as Erling Haaland, Kylian Mbappe. And so there's clearly a big ceiling that they're expecting from him here. And they're banking on the fact that he is going to really improve them. So let's just take a little bit of a look at what makes Alexander Isak so good. Alexander Isak is a bit of a prodigy. He scored his first goal for his Swedish club AIK at the age of 16, and then had scored for the Swedish national team at 17. From there, he very quickly moves to Borussia Dortmund, which is a breeding ground to some very good strikers. His time there doesn't go really well, but he does have a good loan spell at Willem II in the Eredivisie where he scores a lot of goals for them, but it doesn't work out long-term at Dortmund and he ends up moving to another league in Europe, La Liga. He moves to Real Sociedad and that's where he really has his breakout season. Now, the first thing you need to know about Alexander Izak is that he is very tall. He is six foot three, but don't let that trick you into thinking that he is going to be just a classic target man striker. And in fact, the reason why he's talked about in the same breath as people like Haaland and Mbappe is because he is, has explosive pace, but he also has really good technicality on the ball as well. So his ball carrying is excellent. So he is part of that class of strikers now that is coming through where they're not just great goal scorers, but they're also able to generate chances and add upside to their teams. And this shows up really well in his data. So let's just take a look at his pizza chart, which is what I've got on the board in front of me here. This is from his last season at Real Sociedad. And as you can see, the thing that stands out, as we've said, is his carry and dribble volume. So really, really impressive numbers there. And it's not just that he is quick, it's that he is able to take on players. He has the technical ability to get around them. So that stands out really nicely here. The other thing to notice is shot volume. So he's a player who is able to take the ball and get a shot away quickly. Shot volume as a metric is something that looks at how many shots you take per attacking touches. And you can see very, very high here. So he's gonna be able to receive the ball and get shots away very quickly. And these two metrics are both very good signs for Newcastle United because if we compare Isaac with Callum Wilson, who is Newcastle's current number nine, we can see that carry and dribble volume, carry and dribble volume. So both very good at carrying and dribbling the ball. Obviously, Isaac is a better player. Uh, but also again, shot volume, we can see here both at 93. So they're both getting the ball into feet and, and getting it away quickly for shots. That's really important for Newcastle. Another thing we just need to notice quickly is uh, a difference between the two actually. So aerial dual quantity, you can see that Callum Wilson is doing really well in terms of his aerial duels, less so Alexander Isak. And it's worth saying at this point, despite the fact he is six foot three, he doesn't necessarily use his physicality well. So a difference between Wilson and Isak is that Wilson is better at hold up play, at more physical hold up play, taking the ball into his chest and, and taking it down. Whereas Isak is gonna be better at actually taking the ball over his head and running onto it as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, one of the reasons why Alexander Isak was so exciting in the last few seasons was because he was putting up really impressive goal scoring numbers, numbers which were competing with Haaland and Mbappe, as we said before. But what's been really interesting is that there's actually been a slight decline in the last couple of seasons in terms of his goal scoring. So on the board in front of me, I've got Alexander Isak's shot map from 2020 to 2021. And then here, the shot map from last season, so 21-22. Let's just start with the base figures. So shots, 77 shots in 2021, 68 shots last season. If we look per 90, very similar figures, 2.96 versus 2.98. So he's taking the same number of shots in both of these seasons, but is obviously getting better results in the previous season. Because as we see, goals, 17 goals, 0.65 goals per 90 is just an incredible number for anyone. So this is a really impressive season in terms of the goal scoring. The following season, down to 0.17 goals per 90, only four goals last season, which is obviously much, much worse. And that decline is reflected in the underlying numbers as well. So expected goals, 14.7 versus 8.6. Now, obviously there's a slight overperformance in the first season. In the second season, there's a massive decline and underperformance there. And as well, the expected goals per shot is much higher in 2021. So we can see 0.19 per shot uh, expected goals versus 0.12 the following season. Now, if we look at the shot maps themselves, we can actually start adding layers of context so that we can see why that might be the case. So first thing to notice here, average distance 12.9 yards in the first season, 
that drops deeper to 15.4 yards. Now, obviously, the closer you are when you're shooting, the more likely you are to score. So that's one reason. We can also find a little bit out by looking at the shots themselves. So if we look at the shot maps, each of these circles represents a chance. The bigger the circle, the better the chance is deemed to be. And if the circle is filled in with red, then that is a goal. And looking at that first season at Real Sociedad, we can see that Alexander Izak is getting a lot of chances in this six yard box here. He's scoring well, but look at the size and the, the proximity to goal of these circles, obviously doing really well in that season. Now the following season, if we look at that area in particular, again, he's taking his chances in those areas, but there's far fewer chances and far less good chances in those central spaces. That's clearly having an impact on him. So the thing to take away from that is that in this second season, the chances that are being put on a plate for him are just not there as much as they were in the first season. Now, Newcastle United will probably hope that between these two stat lines here, Isaac will probably fall somewhere in the middle. He won't overperform by quite so much, but he also won't underperform by quite so much. There's one final thing that we need to look at because we've already talked about how good he is at carrying the ball. And we've got on the board in front of me here from our friends at Stats Perform, just a map showing you all of the carries that lead to chances from Alexander Isaac in the league last season. This is really interesting. So you can see these are the points at which the carry starts and the carry ends. The red lines indicate when that carry ends with a shot by Isaac himself. And then the orange lines represent when he then plays the ball to a teammate and they have a shot. So if we look at the maps here, we can see that he's generating a huge amount of shots, 22 in total from carrying the ball. Now he only generates one goal from that, but he, you can see that he likes to pick the ball up in these half spaces, drive into the box and have a shot. Less so in terms of chances created for teammates and he doesn't get a single assist as well. But you can see that this ball carrying is something that is really useful as a means of adding value to his team. So he gets the ball in the half space and he progresses the ball, generates shots. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Now the question is, where is Isaac going to fit in in this Newcastle team? So obviously Isaac is a number nine. He's going to be used as a replacement for Callum Wilson. Callum Wilson gets injured a lot. He has just got injured. And so we were going to start off by seeing Isaac starting out in this nine spot. And as we've already said, the profile that Isaac has is very similar to Wilson, so we can expect to see them doing similar things. So if we add a back four on here, we can just talk a little bit about what we would expect from Callum Wilson. So Callum Wilson is really good at playing off the last man. He is good at getting into the space behind when the ball is played through. But also, Newcastle like to start with their wingers quite deep. For example, Sam Maximan is a player who likes to pick the ball up deep and he can then make these driving runs where he gets up to speed and he can just burn past opposition players. And so what this means is that often these fullbacks will be pulled up towards the wide players and this just gives space for Wilson to drop out wide here and they can form these triangles here and, and do build up play as well. And we'll expect to see both of those things from Alexander Izak. So Izak is going to pick the ball up in these sorts of areas. He's really great at picking uh, the, the ball up in behind a defender and, and then running on and scoring. He's just scored a goal for Sociedad against Barcelona where he did this. The ball is played into him, takes it down and then just chips the goalkeeper into the far corner. But another thing that we will see from Izak is that he loves getting into these wide areas as well. And one of the reasons for that is that if he can get into this sort of area and get isolated against the opposition fullback with the ball, then he has the technical ability to be able to just get past these players into those dangerous areas. We saw the carries map before. These are the areas that he likes to get into. And so we will be able to see Isaac drifting into those wide areas as well. But what about when Callum Wilson is back fit and firing? Now it's been suggested by the Newcastle recruitment team that they see Isaac as an option across the front line. So it's interesting to have a think about why that might be the case. So let's assume, for example, that Almiron is dropped and Isaac comes in with Wilson up front. Now we've already talked about how Isaac loves to get into these areas where he can go 1v1 um, and he will have the technical ability to get in behind here and that will allow Wilson to do a lot of the hold up play before which we said Isaac is not as good at. But Isaac has also played as a member of a front two both for his domestic side so he played largely on the right last season in a front two with Sola as well at Sociedad uh, but he's also played on the left of a front two for the national team, the Swedish national team, and they play a 4-4-2 and so he can drift into these sorts of areas. And as we saw from his carries map, he does like to get into these dangerous dribbles towards the goal. He does have a tendency to move from left to right when he runs and, and so maybe it would make sense to play him over on this side. But whichever side they choose to play him on, this formation then could start looking a little bit more like a 3-5-2. So let's say we push up Trippier to be more of a wing back and then you can pull these centre backs back here. This is more like a, a 3-5-2 and if you do this again, you have the option if Wilson is out then to bring 
a player like Chris Wood on as well. And again, Wood can play as that hold-up striker and Izak can drop into these channels where he likes to get isolated against players. Alexander Izak is a player that we would describe as a high ceiling player. And obviously Newcastle paying 60 million pounds for him are gambling that he will hit that high ceiling. But he does have a lot of qualities that I think could carry him there. And it'll be really fascinating to see how he does in the Premier League with Newcastle. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.